welcome my viewers and my listeners to the program Celebrate Your Moment with Joy. This is Pastor Florence. I want to greet you in the name of Jesus and also take this opportunity to thank you very much for the time you take to listen, to watch, to practice what you learn, to share with other people and even praying for me. I also want to thank God for the privilege of sharing his word. I do not take it for granted. I take it very passionately because I know if it was not for the grace of God, I would not be doing what I do. But because the grace of God, which is the unmerited favor, what I do not deserve, I can be able to come and share this word. Why am I so passionate about it? Because God was so passionate about me that he sent his only begotten son. He was forsaken, went through a shameful death and persecution for my sake. He did not deserve it, but for my own sake he did it. Can I be able to repay this? I cannot. That's why I give my life to him, to serve him all the days of my life. Until I don't have the breath anymore. What do you think of the love of God? How have you taken the love of God? What step have you taken because of God's love for you? You know, he loved the whole world. That's why we have John 3, 16. That for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What is that only thing you have that you can give to God? Guess what? Let me remind you. You have your life. You have your voice. You have your talents, you have your gifting, you have your smile, you have your time. Because nobody was created with nothing. We are all gifted in different ways. Maybe you are gifted in the gift of hospitality, being kind to people. And I want to thank God for people that God has brought in my life with the gift of hospitality and generosity. God bless you know who you are. You know, when you are that person who open up to God and tell him, here yeah, I am, use me as it pleases you. Doors open, your eyes open up and you see things. That's why I'm here as Pastor Florence to remind you that you are someone in the kingdom and you are created to make an impact, a positive impact in this world. Without further ado, I want to remind you of my weekly schedule, Monday through Wednesday. I bring you inspiration word. And Wednesdays, I just introduced my mentee back in Kenya, Hannah Waja, who brings us the moment focusing on the boy child. Thursday, celebrating in the kitchen because what we put in this body is of importance. Our surrounding and our environment matters. Then Fridays, like today, I bring you putting on the right gear for the weekend because no one was created to be stagnated. We were all created to be in move, in action for the glory of God. Whatever we do, we do it for the glory of God. Saturday, Sunday, I take a break so that those who go to their place of worship on Saturday, they can have a chance to do that. Those who go to church on Saturday, like myself, you can have a chance to go to your church. May I also remind you that uh, going to church does not necessarily mean that you just go there and sit up, sit down, listen to the mu good music, uh, worship team singing, the pastor preaching, and then go back home. Belonging to a home church means the way you belong to a home, and you can see something foreign down, uh, that is misplaced somewhere, and you pick it up. The same thing with our home churches. Identify what you can do in the church. You may tell me, Pastor Florence, I cannot be able to preach. You don't have to preach to be in a home church. No, you can pray. Prayer is something you can, ne you, you can never miss. You can go ahead before the service starts. Wherever seat you sit on and say, this row I commit every person who will be sitting here to you that they may hear the word. If you serve like I do in the dream team, you know, welcoming people to the house of God, the spirit of God will quicken you, will open your eyes spiritual eyes and you see and you are as you ask people like it has happened many times with me and say as i tell them welcome and uh, i'll go ahead and ask how was your week and from there things open up so what am i saying there is something you can do for god put on the gear of activity okay for today putting on the gear for the weekend i'm gonna be focusing on Runly in a crowd. And I'll be basing my sharing from the book of Genesis chapter 2, uh, verse 18, and also John 14, uh, verse 18 in Jesus' name. 
Let us start with the word of prayer. Be expectant and I know God will bless you. God will speak to you. If it's not with all the sum, the, the messages I will give, at least two words or four words or five words or six words or seven words. Yeah. You can't just come out with nothing. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you as your servant. May you use me as a vessel for your glory. May the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing to you. For my fear and my listener, I pray that this word will go forth as a seed in his or her heart as a good soil that will be watered by the Holy Spirit to bring forth for the fruit of encouragement, of motivation and inspiration, and equipping and preparation for your second coming. Lord God Almighty, I pray that I may decrease as you increase. I lift you higher for you said, if you are lifted up, you shall do men unto yourself. Do only what you can do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Listen to what the word of God says. But uh, let me first of all start by, you know, defining, reminding you the definition. I am, many people ask me if um, I've ever been a teacher. I've been a Sunday school teacher. I was a youth reader. I was a Christian union you know, leader in high school, but I've never been a professional teacher. But I teach the word of God. So it, that is why it is good and I liked grammar. Grammar was one of my favorite subjects. It's always good when you understand the terms or the words being used. So what is to be lonely? Lonely, the definition of loneliness is sad because one has no friends or company. The other meaning I saw when I checked for definition of loneliness is lonely old people whose families do not care for them. I could not leave that and I'll be mentioning why. Now come to Genesis 2 verse 18 says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help perfect for him. NLT says this, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just light for him. Who is just light for him. John 18, 4, 14, 18. The Bible says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. NLT, New Living Translation says, No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I'll come to you. My brother, my sister, you can be lonely when you are in a crowd. When God gave me this message and I started researching about it, I could not go without thinking about the man Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a professional person. He was dealing with people, fighting taxes, you know, so he was, he had customers. I'm sure he had professional friends, yet he was lonely. How do I know he was lonely? He was lonely because when he heard Jesus was passing and he, because of his short stature, he had to cry on a sycamore tree to see Jesus. That is a sign of loneliness. Even though he was a professional, there was something that was missing and he needed to see. When I read and I saw the definition about old people, who can be lonely because they have been forsaken by their dear ones? My heart was sorrowful. Because what you see going on in the world, especially with the young generation, disrespecting the old people. Yet the Bible tells us to treat older people like our own parents. Yeah, it is important that you treat your, older, your elderly with respect. You're starting with your biological parents. It doesn't make sense when you are so respectful to other people outside, but you do not respect your own. When the old people are forsaken, they feel lonely. It is my prayer that no older person in your facility will suffer loneliness when you are there. None of your parents when they are old, they will suffer loneliness when you arrive. Otherwise, it's not going to go very well with you. Now, what are the reasons <clears throat> one can be lonely? Discouragement or feeling rejected. <clears throat> Sorry, that is one. Discouragement or dis feeling disconnected. Are you connected with a, you know, with a, with a group? Are you connected with friends? Are you connected with families? If you are disconnected, you can feel lonely in a crowd. You'll be in a family, but you are still lonely. The other thing is being in the same, you can be in the same house, in the same room, in the same company, in the same business, yet you are lonely. Why? Because there is something in us as human beings 
that was created. And God knew you cannot do it alone. That's why God said, let us make man in our own image. And the first thing that God saw was not good after he created everything was for a man to be alone. You don't want to tell me because you are leech. You are not lonely. That's why we see very high learned people commit suicide. Results of loneliness is suicide or depression or mental illness. May the Lord God help you that you need to be somewhere. It is my prayer that you'll be able to put on the gear of reality. Reality to know that you need somebody. A helper who is fit for you. A friend who is fit for you. A company that is fit for you. A group that is fit for you. Because we cannot fit in all in, in the entire world. Even Jesus himself, he had the world at large. He had the 72, he had the 24, he had the 12, and he had the 3. May God help you to overcome loneliness. Because, you know, even preachers, I can preach here and yet be lonely. How do you handle loneliness? You handle loneliness when you identify and face the reality. Don't cheat yourself. That may be by staying, you know, in your car, by staying in your big mansion, that you can kill loneliness. No. Loneliness will be overcome by facing the reality of knowing that you cannot make it alone. Do you feel disconnected? That is a sign of loneliness. Do you feel misunderstood? That is something that will build up and bring loneliness. Because some people fear to be in the company of other people because they are going to be misunderstood. They will be judged. Can I tell you? If you are born to be, if you are born as a human being, you cannot be loved by everybody. You cannot be accepted by everybody. Even me as I serve, not every person is priest when I preach. Other people maybe they feel like they can throw up when they hear, they just open up and see it's Pastor Florence. Others are longing to just open up and see. I went to Oregon, Portland, and you know, as I was selling my book and I you know, was signing for this lady, she said, oh, are you the woman who cooks? I watch you. You know, even though we had not met, she was passionate. You know, she, there is a connection even though we had not ever met. Yet there are people we meet. There are people who are my friends. But not, my, you know, what I do is not, a, it, it does not connect with them. It does not click with them. So can I tell you, you can be lonely in a crowd because you are giving yourself reason. I, I can't click with this one. The way they look at me. And then lack of self-appreciation can cause loneliness in you. You must have you know, self-confidence, self-love. Self-love is the beginning of overcoming loneliness. When you love yourself, you know you are not alone. Just like the word has said in John 14, 18. That Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. God is with you. God desires to walk with you. And he created us as human beings and said that we need. The word continued to tell us from Genesis to Revelation. There are so many scriptures about having friends. That's why the Bible says in Psalms 133, how good it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. If you go for its first grammatically, you can say how bad it is when brothers don't dwell together in unity. When there is discord, there can be loneliness. You can be in a church, worshipping, and when you get out of there, you are crying because of loneliness. It is, real, it is a reality, my brother, my sister, that you are created not to be a single, a single unit. We are created for each other. Being in, the, being in the same profession, you can be professors in a community, in a, in a community college. You can be professors in the B, even in Harvard University, yet you feel lonely. Because academic achievement does not over, help you overcome loneliness. Loneliness can only be overcome by what God saw was not good. For a man to be alone, you have to have helpers, even in ministry. Even though I learned this independent, celebrate your moment with joy ministry, I need helpers. I need people. Who can call me? You know, when I, <clears throat> I get encouraged when someone calls me, you have been in my mind, or when I call someone and say, oh, imagine I was just about to call you. Sometimes I laugh. I don't judge them that is pretense, but I want to believe there is that 
thing, you know, because God knows that I love unity, God can put a burden into someone. Some people will call me and tell me, oh, even when we fontag, we can't get each other because we are all busy. I've been wanting to call you, you know, this and this and that. You know, some people have even given me a surprise visit. Even in my absence, they come to my house thinking they are going to fight me because there is that connection, the desire for connection. My brother, my sister, can you take that step? Surprise someone with the gift of your presence. Your presence is of importance. The gift of yourself is important. That's why God said it is not good for a man to be alone. You are wondering, this is putting on the gear? Yes, we, I want you to put on the gear of overcoming loneliness. Overcome loneliness by realizing it is a reality. Hmm. Then the, the Lord God said, it is not good for a man to be alone. When you are alone, you are welcoming, you are opening doors for discouragement, for self-judgment, for self-rejection, which can go, can progress to very bad things. That's why you find there are so many things going on. I know in our community we've been hardly hit by deaths, you know, until you wonder why. But the bottom line, you find, you know, one is, you know, in a stable family, but things are still going on. There is loneliness. We need to pray that God may make us desire to be in a unit, in a community, in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. We have not been made to be like orphans lonely. Yes. And he says, I'll come to you. Can you go to someone? Can you come to me? If you don't get me, can you leave me a message of encouragement? For God has said, I will not abandon you as orphans. Have you feel, are you feeling abandoned? If you are feeling abandoned, have you abandoned other people? You know, I was excited and also sorrowful when I read this one. That lonely old people whose families do not care for them. That was a time I used, I, I worked in, a, in, in an assisted living. And whenever a residence would be brought and be, be admitted, there was a downfall. They went down, they went, you know, they, they would <clears throat> go downhill from the time they are admitted until they get used. Why? Because they have been removed from where they were used to be feeling comfortable in the company of family members to a strange place. Don't be in a strange environment. Be where you belong. That's why you need a home church. Don't just be a, a touring, um, a touring uh, uh, person. You go to one church to another, from one church to another. Yeah, I visit churches. And for those who know, I do. But I also belong to my home church. And the more I'm committed in my home church, sometimes it makes it hard for me to go. And also because of my job. You know, when you are <clears throat> lonely, you always feel like there is no need to work. Laziness can be a manifestation of loneliness, which breeds to... You know, discouragement leads to depression, to stress. Oh, my friend, under the sound of my voice. Are you feeling you don't have any motivation? That is a sign of loneliness. Can you put on the gear of action? Can you put on the gear of acceptance? Can you put on the gear of recognizing the symptoms in the name of Jesus? One may be wondering, why are you talking about this, Florence? I don't know. Maybe it's because of you. You know, some things God will give you. You know, I, 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 what was this what I, that prompted me? Because it was several days that this was, you know, put in my mind, in my spirit. That lonely in a crowd. And I could try, try to see Zacchaeus. He was a rich man as a tax collector. Yet he needed to see Jesus. You need to see things to overcome loneliness. What is that? That is making you feel you want to be just see good out. May the Lord God help you. Loneliness is our brain's way of motivating us to reach out and build up our support system. You need to build a support system, but you have to start somewhere. That's why you have to put on the gear of movement. You must get out of stagnation. You must realize stagnation will build to is obvious. A cause of loneliness. I'm going to wait up there. And I believe God will talk to you. Will whisper to you something about this. Father, I thank you for your word. If I have exceeded 
Build what you wanted me to share. Lord, I know you have the power and the ability to filter that my viewer and my listener for this message will only hear what you want him or her to hear. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And because today is about putting on the gear, it's a you, you decide. Yeah, you self search yourself. Am I lonely? Do I feel rejected? Do I feel misunderstood? Do I see, feel vulnerable going out? You must initiate. You must do something. And get out, face the reality. Zacchaeus face the reality. And cry the second tree. That was shameful for her. It would have looked shameful for a professional person. You must get away with that. And cry the shikamo tree of holding to Jesus. You have never given your life to the Lord. That is the starting point. You realize you need Jesus. When you accept Jesus, automatically you reach out for community in Jesus' name. If you have never given your life to the Lord, do you want to say this prayer after me? Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the word. I feel this is my word. I feel only in my heart and I come to you. Lord, save my life. Forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. And give me a desire to grow spiritually. And the courage to get out of, ro of, of loneliness. Of self-judgment. Of self-hatred. And know that you love me. Thank you, Lord. Give me a desire to grow spiritually, Lord. And to be with other people in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you have prayed that prayer, you've been transformed. The old is gone and the new has come because the Bible says... Behold, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. The old is gone and the new has come. Now start walking in the newness of life. First, by giving a testimony. It's so sweet to believe in Jesus. That's why Zacchaeus was not ashamed to cry the second tree. Cry the second tree of saying, I have accepted the Lord. Second thing, find a home church. It's no good to be alone. Join a unit. Join a community. In Jesus' name, may the Lord God bless you. And above all, you celebrate every moment. Not just celebrating, but celebrating it with joy. Why? Every moment counts. Every moment matters. I love you. God loves you the most. Remember to subscribe to my channel. Remember to, leave a, to hit the notification bell so that you know when this message comes up. Remember to like and to share with other people and to pray for me and to follow me Monday through Wednesday. That's this. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, go to your places of worship in Jesus' name. May the Lord God bless you. I love you. God loves you the most. It's my prayer that you are not going to be lonely in a crowd. Thank you.